how to create a React TypeScript project from scratch. In this video, I'll be explaining how you can create a React project that's using TypeScript. And for this, we'll be using Create React App, which still today is the simplest way to get started with React. So what we'll be doing today is going over the environment setup. We'll be looking at the project structure, uh, how to run the application, and then also I'll be giving you some things you can, you can use to keep continue building using TypeScript and React together. But first, let's head over to VS Code. In VS Code, I've created a new project directory called React TypeScript from scratch. So basically what we'll be doing in this video today. And also, I've opened the documentation for Create React App. And as I told you in the beginning, Create React App is still the easiest way to get started with a React application. It might not be the best solution after all, if you're also looking to add things like routing or data, data and state management, but that's something we'll handle in later videos. So today we'll be using Create React App, and it is fairly easy to start with TypeScript and React using Create React App if you would just use the template flag for TypeScript. But that's not what we'll be doing today, because today I'll be explaining how TypeScript works together with React. So what we'll be doing instead, we'll just create a new Create React App project. And for this, we'll be copying the command npx create react app. And we name this new app my slash app. So this will take a couple of seconds, depending on your internet speed, to download create react app and then to create a new project directory that has a react application inside. So while this is loading, I'll explain a bit more about the project we'll be building. So the only thing we will be doing today is using Create React App to start a new React application, and then we'll be transforming this into a TypeScript application, meaning you get to build a React TypeScript app from scratch. And then we'll be creating one component that's using TypeScript. And if you want to keep continue learning about React and TypeScript, then make sure to watch the other videos that will be posted on this channel. So let's head back to a VS Code project where everything is installed by now. You can see a new directory has been created, which is called my app. And in here you can find some basic files. So let's cd into this new directory and run npm start to start the React application. And just as a reminder, this is still a bare bones React application. It is no TypeScript support just yet. So this will start in a development server and then show you this, uh, this loading screen. So this is actually the landing page of a new Create React application. And what we'll be doing today is transforming this page into TypeScript and also adding a TypeScript component. So let's go back to our code and stop the development server. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the name of app.js to app.tsx because we're going to be using TypeScript. And when transforming things to TypeScript, you can choose between TSX files and TS files. And we'll be using TS files today as we are using JSX inside these files. So that is why it makes sense to use TSX instead of TS. And then also index.js, we're going to be renaming this to index.tsx. You might already see some issues, um, some errors popping up in our editor. I'm using VS Code and VS Code has great TypeScript support because we also need to install some dependencies still. So if we go back to the documentation, uh, you can see we need to install some dependencies such as TypeScript and also some dependencies that have the type definitions for React and React DOM. Oh, something is going wrong here. Let's copy paste this. And while this is installing, uh, we can see we already have two TSX files. We also need to create a TypeScript a configuration file. This is also called a tsconfig.json file. And for this, I'll be copy and pasting this from a different file, as I already set it up myself. These files can be quite lengthy. I need to make sure that I create it in the directory my app. So I create a new file, tsconfig.json. And in here, I'll be pasting this code. Well, not this code, but This code instead, I'm going to be cleaning it up a bit. Uh, just get rid of those extra spaces there. And this is the configuration for TypeScript. Uh, you can see the output and the root directory being set. You can also see that we allow for JS. We allow for 
uh, we don't allow for implicit anys. And we also set the target to ECMAScript uh, 5 and the JSX with React is enabled. So the only thing I need to do now is run npm start again. And then we'll create React that will look at my tsconfig.json file to render my tsx files. And I probably will be seeing some errors here as I haven't done anything yet to change these files into TypeScript. So if we're waiting for the screen to load, we can probably see an error message being popped up. To probably tell us that we need to make some changes inside our, um, inside our code files, which we will be doing in a minute. So here they are. You can see we have an error importing the logo.svg. Uh, we have some error uh, importing React. So let's first go to the import of React. If you look here, uh, you can actually see the import is incorrect because TypeScript expects us to do this. Uh, and with this change, it will work. So we can just change this. So this is one way to make it work again. Uh, and then also in app.tsx, we should also import React here. This is something we can override, however. So if we save this, all should be good. We can actually use the imports like we're used to by allowing a new rule in tsconfig.json, which is the allow synthetic default imports to be true. So if you would add this rule, you can just import uh, React as you're used to uh, in this way. But to get back to the topic of today, the other thing we need to fix is importing the logo SVG because it cannot find its corresponding type declarations. And to fix this, we need to create a new file called custom.ts uh, or globals.dts. So this is a file that we can create right here in the my app directory. So let's call it globals.d.ds. So this is a file extension that we can use to type in global type definitions. So I don't need this copy paste. I'm going to be needing this one. I'll be just formatting this and then I can save it. And now it should be all good. So what it does now, we actually added a global type definition for an SVG file. So we're going to be saying that if you are importing something from asterisk.fvg, so basically any SVG file, uh, its content will be a string. As you can see here, the error has also been gone. And if it would be going back to my browser, I believe everything is running as we expected it to be running. So let me create a new component called link.tsx. So link.tsx. Um, and this will be a component for the link. So whatever we see here, we're going to be turning this link that goes to the React documentation into a component. So I've created this new file called link.tsx. In here, I need to import React, of course, from React. And then I'm going to be creating a new component called export default function. And then I'll be component link, of course. So link here. I don't set any prop just yet. And my return function will also be empty because I'm not sure what I'm going to be returning just yet. So I'll be going in here. And what I want to return is exactly this thing. So let me just copy paste it and then also comment it out here and set it as a return function here. Let's save this. I have a new component, which is a TypeScript component. And then from here, we also want to import uh, this component and then render it just like this. So nothing really has changed here. If I would be going back to my browser, I would still be seeing this thingy, but this component is now a separate component. But I also want to pass some props to it. For example, I want to set the ref, which is this ref from the previous link as a first prop. Um, and then probably also want to set, oh, let's see, I'm going to be doing this slash link. Then I also want to pass the title of the link. So that would be learn react. And maybe there's something else we can do. So we have target this thing. So let's add another prop that says uh, target blank. So this will be true. So target blank is now set as a prop. This is true. I can also type it like this, but 
it's nicer to type less. So I can save this. You can see we have an error here because, well, these props, they are known by the component. Inside a component, we should set the props. So we should set, we have ref, we have target blank, and we also have children. And here's a small, cavi small catch. I can actually set the return type as any, so I don't have to type them just yet. And I can focus on my implementation first. So ref will be of uh, ref, just right here. And then this will be children, so this would be the name of the link I'm passing to it. So this will be everything that you pass inside the component tree for link. So everything between the opening and closing tag for link. And then I have another value set target is blank, which I can actually use here. So if you would pass this value, it should set the target to blank and otherwise it should be empty. And the same for the rel prop, it should look if target is blank, it should set these values. Otherwise, it should set an empty string. And then I can also set a default value for target blank because usually it should be false. If I now would be going back, uh, you can see I'm somehow getting an error here, which is strange uh, because I don't see the error here in my editor. You go here, it should be all good. Probably just a glitch in the system. I'll be going here, I can see I still have this component, it's still working. But now I also want to set some type definitions. So instead of having any, I actually want to set some types. So I can create a type called link props. That's usually how you would name it. You would type, you would use the component name and then append props to it. And in here we can actually set all the props. So we have ref, which is a string. We have target blank, which is a boolean. It's not really optional because it has a default value. And then we can set children to be a React node, meaning it could be a React component, or it can be a string as what we're using today. And then this would be the return type for here. Save this. I see I'm still sometimes getting this strange error, which is really surprising me a bit. Maybe it's the globals file, just sure we save it again. That should be better now. I would be going back to my browser. You can see everything is correct. I'm loading the application. It still works. And now it's running TypeScript instead of JavaScript because we have the type checks here. So it's issues checking in progress. It's waiting for type check results. And you can see we have the .tsx files. And also we've created our first TypeScript component. As you can see here, it takes some props. It has type definitions. And as we're importing it here, you can also see the props it's taken and also the values, uh, the type definitions of the values of these props. So thank you for watching this video. If you learned a lot already about TypeScript and React, make sure to follow this channel as I'll be posting videos regularly.